Hi, it's Kate, and this is the first video for week 7 of Math 23. This week we're starting to talk more about real valued functions, and in particular the continuity of real valued functions. It's a really, really important week for you to understand as fully as possible, so make sure to review any of these terms that you find confusing at first. Take a moment, think back to your first definition of continuity that a math teacher ever gave you. Maybe that was, I can trace the function with my finger and I never have to lift it off the page. Maybe that was the limit as we approach from the left of some for some function value is the same as the limit as we approach from the right, which is the same as how the function value is defined. There are a bunch of different types of definitions that we use in pre-calculus and univariate calculus classes before we get into more technical definitions. So refresh your mind as far as what you've been using as a definition of continuity so far, and then as we talk about these two quote-unquote new definitions of continuity, go over in your head how they agree with your softer definition of continuity. You know, where did the softer one come from? How is it sort of a boiled-down version of these perhaps more nuanced definitions? And that's always important to sort of think about you know, where did my previous definitions come from? Why do they make sense? So you're not just memorizing something totally new. I hate memorizing, but also that it just intuitively makes sense to you as far as what you know about the behavior of a given function. So the first one is a definition that is used in ROS uh, using sequences to define continuity. And it is not the standard definition. Most authors will use the second definition we talk about, but let's talk about the one in Ross first. Here is the terminology that he uses. He says if the limit of the sequence x sub n is equal to x naught, note that that's a sequence in the domain of a function, and it says and the limit of f of x sub n equals f of x naught, we call x sub n a good sequence. So we have this sequence in the domain that is x sub n, its limit is x naught, and then it matches to the limit of the function values of the terms of that sequence, and that approaches f of x naught. We call x sub n a good sequence. And if the alternative happens, where we have a sequence in the domain x sub n, it approaches x naught, but the sequence made of the function values of that particular sequence, so the limit of f of x sub n, does not approach the function value at x naught then we call x sub n a bad sequence. And so the way that Ross defines continuity is he's, he says that a function f is continuous at some point x naught if every sequence is a good sequence. So if no matter how you approach x naught in the domain, you'll also be creating a sequence of function values that are approaching the function value f of x naught or the idea is that there are no bad sequences. Already you can see how that softer definition of continuity where we say, oh, the limit approaching from the left is the same as the limit approaching from the right, which is the same as the function value defined at that point. You can see how that ties in here. That idea of no matter how we approach x naught in the domain, we're going to be approaching f of x naught in the image as well when we take a look at that sequence and its function values. That idea is basically espoused in this particular definition of continuity. Now the more conventional definition is the following. This is the epsilon delta definition of continuity that you'll see referred to in both small group problems and sample problems and your homework. But it says let f be a real valued function with domain u being a subset of the real numbers. Then f is continuous at x naught, which is an element of u if and only if. For all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that if x is in u and the absolute value of x minus x naught is less than delta, then the absolute value of f of x minus f of x naught is less than epsilon. Well, on a first pass, that just is insane looking, but let's break it down. Say we have some function f, it's continuous, and what we really care about is whether it's continuous at a particular point, x naught. Now rereading this, what this is saying is that 
For all epsilon greater than zero, and you guys are pretty well trained to realize that the challenge there is always for very, very small epsilon greater than zero, there exists some delta greater than zero such that if x is within delta of x naught, then the function values will be within epsilon of each other. Let's see what that looks like on here. Well, the epsilon that we care about is the distance that the function values are from each other. So here's my band of width epsilon. I want the function values to be within epsilon of f of x naught. So here's my lower band, f of x naught minus epsilon. Here's my upper bound there, f of x naught plus epsilon. And basically, what continuity says is that there exists some similar uh, tolerance in the domain called delta where if I'm within delta of x naught, then I'm going to be within epsilon of f of x naught. And you can find that pretty easily. In this case, all I did was draw where f of x naught minus epsilon had its particular input in the domain right over here on the left hand side, and where f of x naught plus epsilon has its particular uh, point that maps to it in the domain on the right hand side. And it's pretty typical for this to be an asymmetric interval. So if we're looking for x naught uh, plus or minus delta to land me within this band, I should be looking at the smaller distance here, right here. So this is the range here, x naught plus or minus delta, where if I land within that lavender band, I'm definitely going to have a function value that's within epsilon of the function value f of x naught. You might be wondering why didn't I use that larger one because normally we pick maxes. Remember, this is a different thing. This is a different concept, different idea. So if I had chosen uh, this distance to be my delta, which I've now colored in with light blue, if I looked at x naught minus delta on the other side, unfortunately that now would have landed me outside uh, the range of values in the domain that it would have put me within epsilon of the function value in the image. See, that's my frowny face right there. So it's absolutely correct, sort of intuitively, to take a look at when you're looking at this graphically, let's rewind a little bit and take some of these things away, that when we look at where, what point maps to f of x naught minus epsilon, where is that in the domain? What point maps to f of x naught plus epsilon, where is that in the domain? and then trying to figure out, okay, well, if x naught is right here in the middle, then the furthest I can really go on the left-hand side is this little amount. That should be my delta. I double that on the right-hand side. Know that there is not just one value of delta that works. There are an infinite number of them because I could have taken a smaller, any value smaller than this one pictured here, and it still would have worked. I still would have gotten within epsilon of the function value f of x naught. But this is a depiction of the epsilon delta definition and how that works. In ROS, you might be wondering, okay, well, which definition do I use? Uh, so to prove a function is continuous, it's often easier to use this epsilon delta definition. But ROS does a great example uh, on one, a couple of his pages where he uses this limit definition instead. And the whole idea behind his limit definition approach is just essentially saying that, okay, I have some sequence in the domain that does the following. So then I'm going to use that fact and show that the following equality holds. So again, what we're doing is we have the sequence that converges to x naught in the domain and show that the fact that we have a sequence that converges to x naught in the domain, we have a sequence that converges to f of x naught in the image. Very important. So definitely check out page 125 if you haven't already to see how that can be put to good use. You may also be wondering exactly how do I prove if a function is discontinuous? Well, in that case, generally this definition is much more useful. What you need is to find a one bad sequence, and that's it. Show me a sequence that converges to x naught in the domain, but whose function values do not converge to f of x naught in the image. And that's your bad sequence. And that's the only thing you need. You just need, that's sort of almost the exact same approach as the right-hand limit agrees with the left-hand limit, which agrees with the function value at that point. You're showing, oh, here is a limit, right, in the domain that does not, when we take a look at the function values, does not converge to the limit 
of the function value of that element of the domain. That's all for now. Uh, in the next video, we'll be talking more about continuous functions and some of their properties.